Hello, this is Pretty Guardian, and you are listening to the Pretty Nerdy Podcast. Here with me is my co-host, Derek, from the Bonus Commentary Channel. How are we doing, everybody? We are doing great. Today, we are going to be talking about conventions, all of our favorite comic cons video game conventions all of that like fun nerdy stuff where we all get gathered in these big convention halls and just have a a great time you know i remember there being a time when like there was that commercial for um for parents for back to school and you'd hear like it's the most wonderful time and it's like the kids really depressed or whatever I, i i think of that when i think of con season but it's not the con it's the it's like everybody's happy it is actually the most wonderful time of the year because like i I think of families going to cons now like the dads passing it on to their kids and uh the moms passing it on to their daughters because you do see that a lot these days but we'll we'll get more into that in a second it's my favorite time of year and i've been to enough conventions where i think we can have a full-blown like discussion about it yeah i feel like you maybe even a little bit more than me are probably going to be like the convention master in this conversation so the ones that i've been to primarily are the ones here in oregon so like rose city comic con is our big one portland retro gaming convention is one of my favorites and then there's a few other smaller ones that i go to um, depending on like what I have going on that month, like Wasabi Con and Komori Con are some anime conventions that we have that are pretty fun too. See, those all sound amazing. And like, I think California is finally starting to get like conventions like that, or they're becoming more, they're, they're coming more to the forefront because normally, or at least a couple of years ago, it would have just been San Diego Comic Con. That's it. Um, but now it feels like there are more cons that are popping up all over the place in like some very niche ways. Uh, for instance, uh, I know Power Morphicon, which is the uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers convention. That's out here now. I don't know how long it's been out here, but um, I, I know a couple of people that went last year. But for me, I've been to San Diego Comic Con from 2007 to 2012 ish. WonderCon is basically comic-con but smaller and it's just been um oh and uh i went to g-fest last year that you was might a actually big deal g-fest g-fest was fun um i was glad i did it once uh, i don't know that i'm gonna do it again not necessarily because of like anything having to do with the convention itself i just live on the west coast and that's all the way over on the east coast so that costs me a considerable amount to go and stay and then come back um, but I had a great time doing it. I think for starters, like, I guess my first question to you is, because it sounds like you've been to a lot of conventions, can you tell me which one is your favorite and why? Yes. My favorite one is the Portland Retro Gaming Convention. And that is a local convention here. It takes place at the Oregon Convention Center. And you can just tell that it's ran by people who are passionate about keeping retro gaming alive as a hobby. We take up pretty much the whole convention center. There's panels, they have vendors selling all kinds of old games and hardware and all kinds of cool stuff there. And then just probably like the biggest arcade hall I've ever seen in my life. And it's it's always a blast when when they have the Portland Retro Gaming Convention going on. I think one of the things that really surprised me about it is how how many developers are still making games for Atari, Nintendo, and a lot of these consoles that are decades old. And I just think that that's really cool. Wow, I didn't I didn't realize that it was that retro. Look, I thought I. When I think of like a retro gaming convention, my first thought is like, oh, yeah, you get the Super Nintendo carts and like you just have them out on sale. I didn't realize that it was people still doing. Uh, is it ROMs or is it like full blown carts? You know, I don't know, like specifically like the the technical side of how they do it. But there there's always like multiple indie developers that have made new games for these old systems. And and usually you can buy them in like cartridges or or whatever medium those old consoles. use. OK, that's that's kind of amazing. I'm, I'm so into that. <laughs> for me, it's got to go to uh, WonderCon uh, out of like Anime LA, uh, com- uh, San Diego Comic-Con. 
like I feel like that one hits that perfect niche of like uh, the big corporate media stuff and also the small mom and pop stuff kind of meeting under the same roof. It's much smaller. I don't have to run literally city blocks to get to whatever it is I'm trying to get to. You were telling me that that about SDCC. I was bored. I was like, there'd be no way I'm not yeah. into that. Yeah, Comic Con is a is a monster now. It, it I remember my first Comic Con was in 2007. It was right after I graduated high school. It was still pretty big uh, for Comic Con, but like there was still an intimacy there. Um, and I don't just mean like bumping into people shoulder to shoulder because they sardine you in this in, in a convention hall that I believe is at least a mile long. You, they, you are still sardined in like you are shoulder to shoulder trudging to whatever booth it is you're trying to get to. So it, that that's a that's another story. WonderCon is is much is a much smaller uh, venue, but. I feel like I can move, I can breathe, I can see what it is I want to see in a timely fashion. And I think the traffic is mitigated a lot better. And I think they have a means to mitigate the traffic. It's also like if if you're just not feeling up to it that day, or maybe there's nothing going on for you for the rest of the day, Disneyland is literally right across the street. So you can just go fuck up to Disneyland for the rest of the day. <laughs> Disneyland oh, for the better. rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'm not super familiar with WonderCon. Is that a comic convention or do they specialize? Um, it's it is a it is technically a comic book convention, but much like San Diego Comic Con, it's it's more multimedia faceted. There is a heavy emphasis on comic books, but there's a little bit of everything all over the place. Um, so much so that like I think there are even like small like food vendors out on the con floor um it is it is everything <laughs> um so you kind of get your fill on uh, everything it can be very overstimulating but in its own fun way um so i guess now my question is do you have any horror stories from any of these conventions i've heard some horror stories out there i don't think that i have anything specifically horrible i will say there was one summer where i went to rose city comic-con and this was maybe the second time that i had gone and they just didn't seem to have things organized very well and one of the the big things with that is they had a line and for you people down there with like SDCC, this might be totally normal. I don't know. For me, this really shocked me. The line for getting into the convention was literally wrapping like entire city blocks around mm. the Oregon Convention Center. I was in line for over two and a half hours. Keep in mind that I'd like shown up early. Like there were even, there were more people behind me in this line, but it took us two and a half hours just to get to the registration desk to even get into the building. And it, it was, like, super hot and sunny out. Like, people's costumes were melting off their faces. It, it was really a wretched experience. And it, it almost made me go, like, mm, do I really want to spend 50 bucks to go stand in, like, the line simulator again? And luckily, most of my other experiences there were not like this. But that one really sucked. So, <laughs> in a way, it's better and worse at San Diego Comic-Con now. Um, okay, so the last time I went, there was no line for registration because the tickets were all sold out the year prior. The year before that, there was a line uh, probably, th I recall, three city blocks to to try and get into the year, the, to the next year. Fortunately, like, um, the reason I was able to get into the next year was because I had um, I had a uh, first priority because when you buy the ticket for one year, but there are people that were already trying to get in for the year after that. And like, I haven't been since 2012 and I can't imagine uh, I've heard stories about how bad it's gotten now. But like for me personally, it uh, San Diego Comic Con takes place in the gas lamp district of San Diego, which on a good day is this really gorgeous bayfront uh convention like there are uh, there's nice waterfront on the convention hall 
Like you can go out and like go see like ships leaving the harbor and stuff like that. It's beautiful. The second you walk away from that first, uh, well, at least it was this way. I don't know if it still is. Um, you see the um, the downtrodden. You see the heavy homeless population. You see you see drug addicts. Um, there was one night I was just walking. I, I went to a late night um, kung fu panel, and um, I was walking back to my hotel. And man, I saw. I saw damn near everything. I was offered heroin. <laughs> I I watched some people use the restroom in front of me. I was trying to just they just they stop in front of me like I wasn't even there and I had to like walk around them. Um, I'm like trying to stifle laughter over here because all I can it, think is, oh, you would fit right in in Portland. <laughs> You're no oh. stranger to that kind of stuff. I was on my way to work the other day and there was a homeless guy like bent down on all fours, like with this like long little tutor just um doing his shit in the middle of the road. It, it was visually like the craziest thing. I'm <laughs> like in my mind, I'm like, why don't you just like go sit on the side of a building or something? Like literally on all fours, tooting his crack in the road. Wow. Wow. That's uh I mean, it was like that. <laughs> it was pretty close to that. Um, there there have been stabbings um, at San Diego Comic-Con. Um, it's almost always, yeah, it's it's not very pretty. Um, but like... Is it in like the building or outside? Out, it was, it. I, from what I remember, it took place um, in that area I was walking through. It, and it was some girl dressed up as Roger Rabbit or something. And um, I think she ended up being OK. I remember it making the news. I, I haven't heard anything bad since. It's not to say that there are things that happen behind closed doors. It's just what I remember. You know, you put enough people in a place, it eventually gets violent somehow. To an extent, there is a numbers game there for sure. Absolutely. Well, um, talking about like the good, the bad and the ugly. One of the things that I have seen a few times that kind of icks me out a little bit and, and I've seen this happen to both men and women, but a lot of times when people are in cosplay, other people visiting feel like they're allowed to just like go up and touch these people or take pictures of them without asking. And and I always think that that's really gross. Mm -hmm. um, even even just the pictures, like, yeah, you're not touching them, but it's still kind of invasive. And here's the thing. Most cosplayers, like, they do want to take pictures and stuff. Just go up and ask. Like, spark up a conversation with them. If they're dressed up as that character, odds are they're really excited to talk about it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, just don't take it upon yourself to do that. Oh, yeah. And that is rampant pretty much in every convention. I, I'm not... I'm not much of a cosplayer myself, but I have seen it. Um, I like to think that I haven't been responsible for making anybody feel uncomfortable, but I do I do make it a point to ask. And I definitely don't touch because a lot of those things like they're they're held together with hot glue and the hopes and dreams of small children. So like they, they might fall apart if you're not careful. <laughs> so I always try to ask beforehand and I don't want to make somebody's day terrible. Uh, um big ick um there was a i remember it was a gender bent spider-man and her boyfriend as venom and i don't i don't remember what happened i just remember hearing i was to show my age i was standing at the g4 booth <laughs> uh to tell you just how long ago this was and i just remember hearing a commotion and I remember seeing that couple uh, walk by the camera, uh, by like by the camera. There was a commotion past the camera and they walked past me again, maybe 20, 30 minutes later. And the gender band Spider-Man, she had um, she had been elbowed in the nose and was just she was kind of pouring blood all over the place. And uh, her her boyfriend who on my best day I would not fuck with like he was basically a tank in a symbiote suit um looked furious like I, I don't think he was involved but I, th I think he was more mad that his girlfriend got hit and he couldn't do anything about it um that that memory sticks out um okay so on that topic one of my favorite cosplays 
was probably seeing wooden Iron Man. Uh, this guy had made his entire Iron Man outfit out of like two by fours and like planks of wood. So instead of like the high tech Tony Stark, you would expect you hear like it sounds like he's just doing a clog as he's like uh, making his way up the floor. Uh, do you have a favorite uh, cosplay that you can recall like right off the top of your head? In a like similar vein as far as like something that was really cool and over the top that I had seen, there was a, a cosplayer who came as Kerrigan, the the uh, Queen of Blades from Starcraft. And nice. she had like all of the the spines for her hair going back and then the like sort of wing spines coming out of her back. And and I don't know like how she crafted this, but it was really incredible. Like she looked like she could have been in a live action film or something for Starcraft. Yeah. And you want to talk about a community that has amazing cosplay. I usually think of like the fandom of Blizzard games. It seems to be the they, like they have like some of the best, at least that I can recall right now. Yesterday for Diablo 4, I saw this woman with a, a Lilith cosplay and her breasts were perfectly sculpted into the dress. And then she had like the horns and just just the whole cosplay was incredible. If you're going to do Lilith, you might as well go all the way. Like, I'm, I'm not here. I'm not here to like support Blizzard one way or the other. But dude, I wish I could so I could play that damn game. And like the, the set of like we're the, over here the supporting of, the cosplayers, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And they've all I haven't seen a single like uh, uh, who am I to even judge on cosplay? I just said that I'm not like that big into it, like doing it myself. But like, I think that uh, there are a lot of fantastic ones. I actually don't know that I remember a bad one, like one I could even call bad. So I don't know. I don't I've know where I'm going with this. Very bad ones. <laughs> Um, okay. Particularly amongst the the anime conventions that I've gone to. Okay. And I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not really talking shit. If they want to dress up however they want to dress, like fucking rock on. Like that's that's what it's for to to a degree. Like dress up, have fun, have a good time. I have seen people like there there was one guy instead of a corset, he had taken a t-shirt with like um and punched holes into it. And then had like a shoelace, like tying it up. It, it was the goofiest looking thing. And and I almost <laughs> had to wonder, like, was that intentional to to be like, was he making fun of the outfit or or was he really just trying to make a corset out of nothing? That's that, that's I actually have to kind of applaud the ingenuity <laughs> at the very least. Like maybe it was a uh, it was a, oh, God, we have to do this. Ah, I didn't get a corset. Ah, I have an idea. <laughs> Even the. People that have like a limited means, like I, I know someone who who primarily works. His whole shtick is duct tape for his cosplays, and like I actually like whether or not I think they're good or bad, they're always built with like a sense of love and ingenuity that I think really elevates cosplay as an art. Like not necessarily detailed and intricate, but definitely like the love and passion for whatever it is he's making is very clearly there. And I think that always needs to be applauded. Um, so like, yeah, if you're wandering the halls and you see something that you think might be bad, take a second look. Since we've we've talked about cosplay a little bit, we've talked about some like bad stuff with conventions. What's been like your, your favorite or like a, a most memorable fun moment at a convention? Oh God, um, I gotta give it to San Diego Comic-Con to for giving me some of like the best times I have I have stories every which way but one of my favorites was I think it was my last year at comic-con I, I went to an after party with um Mike Realm who was a uh, he's still doing music but he had um he had done a Mass Effect 3 party which I was able to attend um and we all like there was a point where the entire dance floor all started doing the shepherd which is like that where he's doing that like little side jig. So we all started doing that. And I was surrounded by like female uh, shepherd cosplayers and a few um, Dragon Age um, cosplays. So I was like, this is the best night. And um, I felt entirely underdressed, but um, it was it was a great time. Some of the Kung Fu panels that I would attend like had um, I forget his name off the top of my head, but he's been doing Kung Fu martial arts films. Um, as like behind the scenes for like, I think the later days of Bruce Lee. 
and has been like kind of like been a special effects supervisor or a uh, not a special effects supervisor, like a martial arts supervisor. Um, at least the last time I saw him was uh, he was he had one of his last stories I remember was he was going to find Tony Ja in the jungle for Ong Bak. <laughs> When like when he found him, he was in like a loincloth on top of an elephant doing a backflip. No joke. Um, so that was that was his fun story. So like he was always really inter- uh, entertaining and interesting. I hope he's still doing that. Just the atmosphere is really intoxicating. Um, and how, how about yourself? Well, I do want to agree with you about how intoxicating the atmosphere can be. For me, growing up as a nerd, like, I feel like I was always bullied for my interests, like, whether it was Dungeons and Dragons or video games or comics or, like, whatever it was. Um, I I don't want to say, like, I'm ashamed of that part of my, my personality. Like, I feel like I've really embraced it at this point. But going to these conventions where you're surrounded by people that have the same interests as you we're we're all just like dressed up having a good time it it really is like an incredible atmosphere and and it gives you like almost a sense of freedom to just like be yourself and and enjoy your time in this world as far as like fun memories one that kind of sticks out to me was when i went to portland fan expo And William Shatner was doing a a presentation. And I'll start by saying, like, I'm not a fan of William Shatner at all. Like, I I didn't watch his generation of Star Trek. I'm not interested in anything that he's done before. But it was kind of one of those things where, like, oh, well, William Shatner's coming on. I'm just going to go sit down and and watch and, and see what his story is. And... I I was like really impressed. He he came out on stage and he was just incredibly personable. He started like moving around the like rearranging the furniture to like get closer to the audience. And he was telling all these amazing stories. And he started talking about like a t- he was referencing it as kind of like a time before television was popular. And then he would like go into all these stories about like going up into space and his experience with that. The man has led an interesting life. That's for sure. <laughs> but it's amazing. Yeah. Well, and so then I I left his like presentation or whatever. And the way he was talking about that like time before television, in my mind, I knew William Shatner was old. I I had assumed like maybe early 70s or something like that. No, he's in his 90s. And he was just incredible. Like his um, physicality of being able to like get out on stage and move furniture around the way that he recalled all these really cool stories. Like I was just super impressed by him. Wow. That's, that's pretty cool. When you mentioned William Shatner, um, another memory of mine uh, came up. It was my first Comic-Con and uh, I was kind of being chaperoned by my buddy and one of the things we did was we we'd um, we were gonna go to a, a bar that he really liked, um, and as we were leaving, we saw Stan Lee. Um, he was surrounded by his little entourage of dudes who are at least uh, in their twenties that could probably rip a phone book in half. So we couldn't like go up and shake his hand or anything. Yeah, the, the, my my buddy just turns around and shouts, "Mall Rats is my favorite movie of yours." <laughs> And he, Stan Lee turns around and goes, it was my finest performance. And they, we just kept walking. Um, and this is before he was making Marvel cameos out the wazoo. I haven't bumped into any. I've not been that fortunate. I've, I've seen a few like in passing, like at their meet and greet stands and that sort of thing. But I haven't bumped into them or had the opportunity to really chat with them. I, I would say the the William Shatner thing, like, even though it was a presentation, it was probably one of the more, like, intimate moments with a celebrity at Comic-Con that I've had. Hmm. Interesting. What about you? Uh, uh, for Comic-Con, like, they're, they're kind of just left to their own devices, from what I could tell, at least to, like, at least that's how it used to be, where, like, they would just be kind of left with maybe one or two chaperones. Um, but I have bumped into a lot of people um it, there's been so many oh uh george romero <laughs> humble brag 
Um, that was fun. Um, and uh, it's funny because I remember uh, George Romero and uh, Edgar Wright. Um, I bumped into. I had just seen um, where he was going to another booth, and I had just picked up a copy of Space, which was like one of his first TV shows. The one thing I remember about both of them is how much they both smelled of cigarettes and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my god relatable <laughs> you have um, a, a really kind of i think it's a fun story about like i think it was ren fair where you got to see the cast of critical Role. yes yeah um i i think we talk about it in um our D D or excuse me our critical role episode uh, yeah, go go watch that. Um, but the short version is I was in line for the Obliette and I saw the entire cast. Um, I got to meet Matt Mercer, got to take a picture with him. I got to talk with Ashley Johnson um, and Talison Jaffe. I, I wish I could have had, met and talked to all of them. But like it was it was just a like little solar system of celebrity. And um, like I don't fangirl very often, but for them, yes, I absolutely fangirled. <laughs> I guess with our combined knowledge, what would your uh, tips and tricks be for going to a convention? I would say to like go on the website and just kind of like review like the rules and expectations and stuff before you go a little bit so that you can just be a little bit prepared for some of that. Uh, as far as like when you're actually going to the event, I would say like pack water for yourself, maybe some snacks like that sort of thing because it can be very expensive to buy that sort of stuff when you're there and you're definitely going to want to stay hydrated especially if you're like walking around a lot going to all these panels screaming for any celebrities that you see there um just be prepared um yeah i would say preparation is absolutely important um deodorant for the love of god Pack deodorant. I don't care if you're in cosplay. I don't care if you're just walking around in a t-shirt. You're gonna be you're gonna be shoulder to shoulder with hundreds of people, and your body temperature is going to rise, and eventually your morning deodorant is going to run out. Pack deodorant. <laughs> Maybe even some mouthwash if you plan on talking to people. Uh, this is from me personally. I you know um, I am one of the people that do start. I've started packing uh, deodorant, especially like four conventions that are so compact um and and uh i go to the liquor store and i pick up like some bottle like little overnight mouthwashes just so i have it on standby if i know i'm going to be talking to a lot of people probably oh, shouldn't God. admit this in public to like all of our potential audience here but just as like a tip for somebody who's i don't know maybe in a dire circumstance I've literally gone to the bathroom before and like washed out my pits in the middle of an event because mm. I knew that I was not as fresh as I was when I first got there. So do what you need to do. Yeah. You know, you're you're going to be surrounded by people uh, might as well not be remembered for, you know, being a biohazard. Another my other suggestion is if you're going for the weekend and you want to pick something up, use day one as a means to scope things out unless there's like a day one exclusive don't pick anything up. Usually on the last day, usually, um, if you're like looking for something that's been there all weekend, uh, they'll try and drop the price at like the zero hour. So that way they, they don't have to haul it back home or whatever it is they're going to go. And don't be afraid to talk to vendors like you might be able to score a deal. Just, you know, use your deodorant and mouthwash if you're going to go talk to them. <laughs> Well, so getting in there with like the scoring the deal thing, I would also advise people to like plan ahead and bring cash with you. Mm -hmm. I've been to a Wasabi Con. It was in a hotel. And because of like where they had the vendors situated, their like square readers and stuff were not getting service. So they were only able to take cash on site. And then I've also been to Rose City Comic Con where the ATMs have ran out of cash. So people weren't able to get it from the ATMs. So Ooh. both of those things are possible. And you don't always necessarily know the preferences of the vendor you're seeing. Some of them do take cards. Some of them don't. So just have some cash on hand if you want to make purchases. That's great advice. I'm going to have to do that from now on myself, honestly. Um so with that, I think it's important to say uh, if you are going to a convention this season, you know, be be careful, be safe, 
carry cash deodorant and mouthwash. That should be the convention starter pack right there. Um, mouthwash, deodorant, cash, water. <laughs> it's the holy trinity. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, just be good to each other out there. Hey, if you love conventions as much as we do, jump down there in the comments section and tell me what your favorite one is and why, because I would love to read all about them. Yes. Stories. We love stories. So let, let's hear it. Uh, well, with that, I think this is going to be a great place to call it. Uh, this has been a really fun conversation that I wish we could have more of. But um, thank you so much for listening. Uh, as Pretty Guardian said, leave your comments, uh, likes, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, we'd, we'd love to hear your stories about any conventions, um, any conventions you're thinking about attending. Let us know. I'm actually... I'm actually thinking about going to the Days of the Dead um, convention out here in California, which will be closer and cheaper than San Diego Comic-Con. And it's going to have a lot of horror and sci-fi stuff. So I want to check that out. You know what? I'd really love to pick your brain a little bit more about oh, okay. some conventions in California at some point. Because okay. I would really, I'd love to go outside of Oregon. And just, I want to go up to like Emerald City Comic-Con in Seattle. And then at some point I want to go down to California and kind of see you know, what the convention circuit's like down there, too. Oh, man, there's a there seems to be a convention every Oh, man, there's a there seems to be a convention every month now. So like whenever you show up, we might be able to find something for you. <laughs> if not, if not a convention, I know a bunch of places that um, might be able to like scratch a convention like itch. Um, it's not a convention per se, but there's a place called um, Frankensons. I think they might have changed it since I was last there, but it's literally a it's like a swap meet convention. It's it's really interesting. It has the atmosphere of a convention like celebrities show up. There's like carnival food, um, but it takes place um, once a month in this giant warehouse. And um, so, like, if you come down, like, we'll be able to at least head up Frankenstein's. <laughs> But yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll touch base and we'll figure that out um, off camera. Maybe we'll do a uh, if you guys like this video enough, we'll make a um, pretty nerdy on the road or something where we both go to a convention. If this video gets enough traction, we're doing pretty nerdy on the road. All right. Challenge. We need 100 likes. I think that's I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I think, I think so that's too. fair. It's it's high. But it's achievable. 100 likes and we'll do a pretty nerdy on the road. <laughs> um, in the meantime, guys, uh, uh, thank you so much for listening, so much for watching. And we'll be sure to catch you on the next one. Uh, take care of yourselves out there, everybody. See you then. I have stopped recording.